Welcome back to another exciting episode of Filmmaking for Noobs. I'm Kyle Lawrence and today we're talking about how to make monitors, televisions, and even your cell phone look good on camera. If you've ever tried filming with any sort of display in your shot, you've probably noticed that the color doesn't look right, or it's too bright, or the screen flickers, or the old school TVs are just totally spasmatic, or something just doesn't look right. I'm going to show you how to fix all those things so that your shot doesn't look like this. First we'll look at the modern day displays and then come back to the old ones. Ideally, when lighting your shot and adjusting your camera, you want to choose the lighting and the settings that are best for the shot and not have your entire camera and lighting department revolve around a monitor. In Hollywood, there's an entire department called the Playback Department, which revolves around making TVs, monitors, and other displays look great on camera. They are also responsible for designing the graphics to play back on the monitors. But how can you do this yourself on a limited budget without hiring professionals? You may sometimes have a television or a monitor that you're trying to shoot in your shot, that is flickering, uh, first of all, if it's plasma, you're not gonna be able to film it, most likely. It's gonna flicker, sorry. But if it's not plasma, if it's LCD, then typically the flicker can be resolved uh, pretty quickly and easily. However, there are sometimes some of the really cheap end LCD displays that are gonna cause problems or look bad on camera. First step for all monitors is to bring the backlight up to 100%. Some monitors will flicker when the backlight is too low. So bringing your backlight up all the way will help to eliminate flicker. If your monitor doesn't have a backlight setting, it usually means that the backlight is controlled by the brightness setting. In that case, bring your brightness up to full if you encounter flicker. The second step is color. You can see that the color is way off. It's pretty blue. Uh, right now we have the cameras set to 3000 Kelvin for our color temperature because it's all lit tungsten. It looks really good, but the monitors are blue and don't look very good at this color temperature. With some monitors and televisions, you can adjust the color using the monitor's menus. I prefer to do this at the source using software. There are a lot of tools available for this, but one of the simplest tools, which is free and compatible with both Windows and Mac, it's called Flux. When you're using Flux, in the settings, we can adjust the color temperature of the computer's output until it looks good on camera. As a rule of thumb, your whites should look white, not too cool, or too warm, and you wanna to check to make sure that your reds and your yellows pop. To my eye, it looks kinda of dark, uh, really orange, pink, yellowish. Uh, doesn't look great, I wouldn't wanna sit here and watch TV on this. On the camera, it looks really good, and it looks really natural. The third step, without negating the first step, is to adjust the overall brightness of the image so that the screen is not overexposed on camera. Now, I like to do all of my brightness exposure control uh, in software. So whether you build your graphics in a way that the whites are not so bright, um, you keep your levels a bit lower, uh, or uh, software control, uh, there's various programs out there that can allow you to bring down the brightness output on your computer, um, or even in your graphics card setting, depending on your GPU. If software or GPU settings is not an option, then as a last resort, you can adjust the brightness of the screen itself. If the monitor that you're using has separate backlight and brightness controls, then you can bring down the brightness without having to worry about flicker from the backlight. However, if your monitor does not have these separate controls, then be careful how low you bring down the brightness so that you don't undo what we solved in the first step. When trying to film a CRT television or monitor, you will experience a crazy flicker or rolling bar such as this. This issue doesn't happen with LCD displays such as my laptop here. However, the old CRT monitors, tube TVs, even though they look normal right now to me, to my eye, they're not looking good on camera. They flicker. The reason for this is because they're out of sync with the camera. The camera right now is shooting at 24 frames per second or 23.976 frames per second. TVs and monitors are projecting images at 30 frames per second. This is caused also because of the way that the cathode ray tube television is designed and how the camera perceives the phosphor dots in a different way than our eyes. The way to fix this is to synchronize the television with the camera. This is done by matching the TV's frame rate to the camera's frame rate and matching the TV's refresh rate to the camera's shutter speed or a multiple of the camera shutter speed. In the case of a CRG computer monitor using a refresh rate of 48 hertz or 96 hertz, 
will also do the trick since those are multiples of 24. On a Hollywood budget film or TV show, this is accomplished using expensive and hard to find frame rate converters. One of the choice converters is by a company called Schindler Imaging. This product, however, is no longer available and it'll be nearly impossible to find a used one being sold because they are now precious commodities. There are other flavors of frame rate converters and when working with computer monitors, there are specialized graphics cards and software which will do the trick. These converters convert the incoming signal to 24 frames per second, however, it does require a compatible television or monitor. Older televisions have a V-hold knob and some models have hidden service menus which will allow you to adjust the TV's vertical hold so that the TV can correctly display the incoming 24 frame signal. Now, if you're working with a low or no budget and you don't have the ability to rent or acquire one of these costly devices, here's some tips on how you can achieve similar results without using costly gear. Right now, our TV is playing an image at 30 frames per second. To my eye, in person, this TV looks normal. Currently, we are shooting at 24 frames per second with a 1 over 50 shutter speed. If we increase our shutter speed to 1 over 60, the rolling bar goes away. That's because our shutter speed of 1 over 60 is now the same as, or very close to, the TV's refresh rate of 29.97 times 2, or 1 over 59.94. This trick allows us to keep our camera at the same frame rate, but keep in mind that it does have a small effect on our motion blur, which may cause shots where the TV is seen to look a bit less favorable if there is a lot of motion in that scene. Setting your shutter speed to 1 over 30 also helps with the TV issue, but this has a much more noticeable and usually less desirable effect on motion blur. When you're working with the CRT computer monitors, another thing that you can try is quite a few monitors that do accept a 50 hertz input. There's some graphic cards out there that do output 50 hertz. Right now this is playing at 50 hertz and the camera is rolling at a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second at 24 frames per second and so 50 hertz looks pretty good and so if you can find the right monitor and the right graphics card then you can just use a computer, output a 50 hertz signal and sync it up with your camera that way without using really expensive gear. There's a free piece of software online called CRU, which will allow you to fine tune your GPU refresh rate beyond what most operating systems will allow. And lastly, cell phones can be dealt with similar to an LCD screen. Depending on the model of phone, you may find that you can adjust your backlight without introducing flicker, although some cell phones may not be as cooperative. On iPhones, you can use the night shift feature to color correct the phone's display. If you have a Mac with Xcode, you can also download the source code for an open source app called Gamma Thingy and compile it onto your phone, which will give you much more control over your iPhone's color settings. On Android, there are many free apps available which will allow you to adjust the color of your phone. Links to Gamma Thingy, CRU, and Flux can be found in the description of this video. Keep in mind that without the right gear, it's going to be very difficult to guarantee great results. Spending some time beforehand, a lot of trial and error and testing can go a long way in helping you to achieve better results. Thanks for watching Filmmaking for Noobs. I'm Kyle Lawrence. Check out my channel for more episodes. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Filmmaking for Noobs. If you liked what you saw, then please let me know by clicking that little like button. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel by clicking my face right there. You can check out other videos here and here, or if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover in a future episode, then please leave a comment below. Until next time, keep it rolling.